In this video we are going to learn how to generate Word documentation and the various options available to you. Like prototypes there are many options. I've used Word documentation for more than just deliverables for handing to developers. On one project we used uh, documentation for managing the copywriting process. What is important to know about generating useful documentation is that you need to know what you want to output and put the appropriate level of detail in. You can add custom documentation configurations just like we did for prototypes using the generator configurations tab. So let's create a visual designers configuration to demonstrate how you might customize documentation for a particular audience. So we'll click add like last time but this time add a word documentation configuration uh, and name it. Click generate. Again this opens the generation options rather than actually generate the document. We check out general options first which is very similar to the prototype generation options we saw in the last video. Let's choose where the file will be saved to. Uh, let's save to the default location in my documents. Next we're going to go ahead and generate the file so we can refer to it as we look at it and modify the options. This is the opening page. As you can see you need to fill in various fields. There's a placeholder for an abstract. A table of contents is empty at this point. Pages, you can see a page tree here and on scrolling down we can see the pages in our file with their associated index numbers. Let's get back to our configuration. We need to click on generate again to look at it. Let's go to pages. You'll first find a checkbox to indicate whether you want to include pages in your documentation. Uncheck this and you'll no longer have information about the pages in the file. We can change the section header, not really necessary though. You can choose whether to include the page tree we just saw. By default all pages are generated but you can choose to generate a subset. When we generate we only see references to the pages that we have checked in the documentation configuration. As you can see, the home page specifications are no longer included. So it's all very customizable. Back to Axia, let's recheck all the pages. The Masters options come next, where the first few options are similar to what we just saw for pages. Um, do we want to document the Masters in the project? And so on. Let's have a look at what the default configuration generates. We can see our header master with our menu and the add to basket widget in a section of the document that comes after the pages documentation. What's significant is that by default master documentation isn't duplicated throughout pages but is documented once in the master section. OK, back to Axia and let's find where we were. So we can choose to generate only a subset of masters, just like pages. At the bottom you will find checkboxes where you can opt to generate masters documentation in the pages section if, so requ if you require. On to page properties. Again we can choose to include or exclude page notes. What's important here is that we are going to generate documentation for designers, so we only want to include designer page notes. We can choose to include page interactions here. I may want to exclude these because they're not relevant to this designer audience. Let's go and see where page notes are generated in the documentation. Page notes appear immediately under the page title. Next up, the screenshots and widget tables. We should introduce these together because they're used in tandem. Let's look at the default document to see what I mean. As you can see we have a screenshot of the page 
with numbered footnotes on it. These numbered footnotes are generated in the documentation where there is either a note or some interaction associated with a widget. When we scroll down we see the widget table with the numbered footnotes that correlate to the numbers in the screenshot. It could be said that we don't need all of the interactions present in the designer's documentation, so we'll uncheck these along with all other notes that aren't required from the widget table. We'll keep the footnote, the name, the status and design styling notes. Something else we'll do to remove any unnecessary entries in the widget table is check remove rows with only footnote and label data. Obviously I'm just providing some examples here. In a work environment you will want to sit down with the various departments and establish what you're going to document in your documentation and how you'll do it. Now we see the screenshots and widget tables with only the information we have specified for this audience. The next tab is layout. A trick I've learned is to use two columns in a landscape layout, one column for the screenshot and the other for the widget table. I'm not going to do this because of time constraint, but by selecting two columns and setting a left column width of around 65% and then adjusting the order of the output like so, screenshot in the left column and notes and widget table in the other, you can look at the screenshot whilst referring to the widget table. For the maximum width, you should also open the Word template file and change the page layout to landscape before saving it again. Pressing edit in the Word template screen will open the .doc file for you to do so. You can also do some further customization to the template while you're there. Okay, that's it for documentation. Next, we're going to look at creating widget libraries and how you can use them to work collaboratively.